Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing how to set up your Galaxy S4. Now this will be uh, the original setup, so from the uh, first screen. So uh, this is the AT&T version, but they all should be very similar to this. So first we're just going to go next. And I don't have a SIM card in this device, but um, you can set one up without it, so it's fine. Um, and then you're going to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Now this is very important. I always recommend the first time you set up your phone to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. Simply because if you're restoring your phone, meaning you previously had um, another Android device and you now have a new one, uh, Google allows you to restore your phone, but it's going to only really be good over a Wi-Fi connection. So I'm going to connect to this network uh, off screen, of course. So hold on one second. And then I'm going to connect right here. And that will connect to the MiFi. And now I'm connected. So once you're connected, you'll go next. And then it's going to ask you for the date and time. I do recommend, of course, setting up your uh, time. I'm in Los Angeles, so it's Pacific. And then do you have a Gmail account? You will need to create a Gmail account uh, to use this device uh, to be able to purchase apps um, and uh, other things such as music, movies, all that kind of fun stuff. So create yes and then you sign into your account. I will sign into my personal one and again go for a second off screen. If you do not have a Gmail account of course you will have to create one. And then you're just going to hit done, and it's going to sign you in. Now again, the better your internet connection, the quicker you'll get this part, which is the backup and restore feature, which will allow you to restore your phone uh, to the way your last phone was, um, in terms of all the apps that you downloaded and everything such as that. And uh, for this section, um, uh, I would always check both off. This simply allows um, apps to use uh, your location, uh, whether it be for Wi-Fi or GPS, and it just allows um, apps to work uh, more efficiently because um, a lot of apps do need to know location in order to find um, a lot of things, basically. If you leave them off, sometimes you don't always have functioning. Uh, now you can add uh, whatever other type of email you have for the standard email app. So if Gmail is not your primary email, you can add any of these uh, you want. I'm going to skip this for now, but you can add any of uh, these sections you want for Hotmail, uh, Microsoft Exchange for like an Outlook account, Yahoo, um, and this particular one, AT&T Net, and AOL. Oops. Back one, and then uh, if you do have a Samsung account, I do recommend you sign into that uh, simply because this is uh, Samsung's way uh, for linking everything, such as um, well, going off of these four, you have the uh, Find Your Phone. So this is how um, you can find your phone from a PC uh, using the S4. Samsung App Store, where you can download um, certain apps that aren't on the Play Store. Chat on, which is kind of like an instant messaging across all platforms uh, from Android to iOS to Windows to uh, Blackberry, and Samsung Link, which allows you to remote access uh, your computer from home. So I will sign into my Samsung account and again do this offline or off screen rather. And then it's going to be signing you in. And then you can name this device. So, because I do not have um, a SIM card in this one, I'm going to call this one Android Guy Wi Fi. So, we'll put a little hyphen in there. And then hit 
next. Now this is a very important section. I recommend um, all of you definitely go in depth with this section uh, before starting your device. And here's why. So for each of these sections, um, you'll see uh, a feature and what it does. Now if you hit on the feature, so if I go to SBeam and I hit on it, it'll actually explain what it does and I can hit OK. Some of them are more in depth. So Air View, um, I can actually play a preview of what Air View will look like on each of these sections, which makes it uh, really easy to kind of uh, get a feel uh, for these features and how they would work. So that is Air View. For Air Gestures, it's a really nice one and you can kind of see what the different forms of it are. So Gesture Sensor Icon, Air Jump, which allows you to browse between web page, Air Browse, which I use all the time to uh, go through the gallery, Internet, music player, air move, which I don't use as much, but you can kind of go, if you hold uh, anything down, you can kind of go through other um, parts of the screen. And so we'll turn that on. And that is it. It doesn't have the last one, which was to pick up a phone call from here. Or maybe it says it somewhere and I'm just missing it. Uh, voice control, uh, which I definitely use for my camera to take photos, for my alarm to say stop or snooze, for my music to say pause, play or volume, and of course for incoming calls, you can answer um, and reject the call. Uh, so you can say answer or reject, and it'll reject the call, so let's we'll turn that on. Smart stay, which allows it as long as you're looking at the device, your screen will turn off on you, so if you're watching a video or reading an article and you don't want it to turn off on you this well, one time, it won't because it'll see that you're looking at it and you don't want to be disturbed. Uh, smart pause, which is a really nice one, as long as you're watching a video, uh, you basically have the ability to watch the video and then as soon as you don't look at it, it will actually uh, pause for you. Now, important to note that, um, you know, if you have really poor lighting, it's not going to work. Um, as well as if you um, have it connected to the All Share cast or an HDMI, it won't work. Which makes sense because if you're, you're not going to be wanting to look at the phone, you're going to be wanting to look at the TV. So there you go. I'll turn that function on. Smart scroll, which allows you to either tilt your head to look up and down to scroll or you can tilt the device, which uh, I would recommend tilting the device uh, if you are using smart scroll. Just makes more sense and easier. Easy mode. Now this is a really uh, very simplistic mode that I recommend for anyone that's a first time smartphone user. It's just a lot simpler to get into the phone and then maybe even a month down the line you might be ready for full Android, but this I recommend for any first time user. And then adapt display. This basically uh, changes your screen um, to um, your setting and how much light is on the screen and as well as the colors, what it should be for that particular uh, display. I highly recommend this. It uh, gives a great viewing experience. And that's it. So we'll finish. And then uh, if you have AT&T, you can use AT&T Locker. I do not use that, so we will skip that. And there we go. As you can see, I believe my apps are already starting to download. So I'm getting a bunch of apps downloaded, and these were just because I've previously had them before. So uh, my apps are downloading in the background already um, because I've had this uh, device before and the system reset it. So yeah, guys, um, that is how you start up the phone for the first time and set it up. Um, I'll be going over another screen how to set up your home screen, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, The Android Guy.